how do you know if you're a good photographer? And this is probably the most common question I get from other photographers, not how do you know if you are, but how do I know if I am? How do I know if I'm any good at photography? Now, I made a video a while back on the Dunning-Kruger effect and um, you know why bad photographers think they're pretty good which is great, but, but how do you know? How do you know where you sit in the world? And I'm gonna help you try and answer that question. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is, there are different levels of good. If you're talking about good enough to make money, anyone is good enough to make money if you have a camera. There is this problem in that people don't know what a good image is and they'll happily pay for someone to create a bad image. I'm sure you've all gone around and gone, why on earth did they hire this person to do that? It looks horrific. It's because the person doing the hiring doesn't know any better. And there's no one there in that business who knows any better to go, this is awful. You know, we don't all have visual taste. We don't always know what is good and what is bad, and which is part of the problem. But the reason you're probably worrying about it is because you want to know whether you can make a viable business out of this, whether you've got what it takes to be a good photographer. Now, when we look at the Dunning-Kruger effect, we have this bit at the start where you go, I know nothing. And then you learn a bit and go, I know everything, when in fact you, you know about the same as nothing. And then you slowly start getting better. It's a pretty common phenomenon in pretty much everything. So I want to give you some key pointers as to where you might be in your career. And what you know and what you're getting at this stage might sort of tell you where you are and if you're any good. So the first part is, as a bare minimum to start learning, you need to understand how to use flash, how to use exposure, how to focus properly using um, perhaps a shimflung principle or perhaps you know, understanding depth of field fully. These are things that are just a given. You should be able to go, right, if I need to create sunlight coming through a window onto a table in France at 9 a.m., I know how to light that scene. If I need to create this split color lighting, I know how to do that. Whatever it may be, you should know how to do it. That is just the technicalities. That is your alphabet of the English language. And then you're going to start doing creative writing lessons. You know, and that is when you start to use them and shoot with them. But these really are the very beginning. If you're at the point where you can do off camera flash and make the sun look really epic, and you're thinking, yes, I'm great, you're at that Dunning-Kruger point at the moment where you think you know everything, but actually you know very little. Once you get to this point and go, I know how to do everything. Why am I not making a lot of money and shooting big campaigns? I'm as good as those people. That is the tipping point of whether you're going to make it as a photographer or not. That is the point at which people plateau. Because some people go, it's unfair. And other people go, what do they know that I don't? What is it they're doing that makes their images better than mine? Why are they getting booked and I'm not? I think my work's as good as theirs, but clearly it's not because they're getting these bookings. What is it? What, what is it in there which is making this chasm, this difference? I can't even see it, but I know it must exist. That is the good train of thoughts beyond. That is where you're going to be pushing yourself in the right direction. If you're going, oh, they must know people, my work's as good as theirs, you know, it's just because they live in London, whatever it is. That is you plateauing and that is you slipping off the tracks. I suddenly got a very dry throat and I've pinched one of the kids' food shoots. Now at this point, you need to make that decision. If you go down the path of, right, what is it I need to do? You need to find people who can help you. It is so hard to see what's wrong in your own work when you get to a level where your work is competent. And this is the point where it's not necessarily camera or lighting related issues. It's more visual issues, compositional issues. It might be the narrative, it might be the style, it might be the, it's those little things. And this is why you have to have a niche. Because if you do a bit of everything, you're sat at that, I can do off camera flash status, and you just do it to, you know, I can do a landscape, I can do this. But what you need to do is go, right, I'm gonna specialize in interiors. I can shoot anything, like all of us can. I can shoot a wedding. I could do an average fashion shoot. But I can't shoot the night campaign because I don't have that little bit extra. And that bit which goes from, I can do this at a competent level to, I can do this brilliantly, is such a small gap, but the effort required is huge. If you thought it was difficult learning off camera flash and exposure and all the rest of it in composition, this next bit, it is the bit which you will spend a decade on. Now, I'm a firm believer that absolutely anybody can do this. I don't think there's any particular 
skill needed to make it as a professional photographer. Yes, to be the next Annie Leibovitz, you do need something special about you. But for most of us, we can achieve this. But it comes to finding that tipping point and going, yes, there are people better than me. And it, it comes to a certain level of humbleness, which is quite difficult when we're working with our own work and our own vision, because we need to believe in ourselves, but also we need to question ourselves. And it's one of the reasons I always have like a mentor around who can, I can bounce ideas off and more recently a new agent who I can talk to and go, look, I, I don't understand why are these people getting the jobs and I'm not getting these types of jobs. What is it that they have that I don't? And they'll, they'll explain it to me and I'll be able to go, right, let's take that thing they have that I don't. And it might be just a more stamped out style, which is even more signature to them than mine and go, right, let's look at my style. Let's look at the essence of what my style is. Okay, I can apply it to more things and show that that style is more coherent perhaps. And I'll go and try that, see if it works. And then and you have to keep going back to the drawing board. And that is sort of how you work out how good you are. Now, the next stage up from getting that off-camera flash thing is either getting an agent or not having an agent, but shooting for the big ad agencies. Um, and that is your next step along the tracks. And then from that point, it's going, right, not only am I getting picked by these people, but they're picking me by name because they want my name on the campaign, which is a height I have never got to and I may never get to. Um, but it is the next goal on the, you know, on the trajectory of my career, I guess. And these are sort of the main stepping stones. So it's number one, learning your alphabet. You can do off camera flash, you can do some fancy Photoshop, you can do all the technical stuff, but that's like the beginning of the journey. That's learning to write your ABCs. The next step is probably getting signed to an agent and shooting the big campaigns. And between these, there is a chasm, there is a 10 year slog, which most people never make it through. And this is where you're shooting for the local independent companies. You're shooting for the local ad agencies or you're shooting for the ad agencies that take the overflow from bigger agencies. And then you move on to the big agencies and the agents and all of that sort of the world. And then from there to the next bit, some of you never get there. I may never get there. We'll, I'll just keep trying, I guess, and see what happens. And then you get asked for by name. We want, we want Scott to shoot this campaign. And that's what happens before they even contact you. Someone's had that conversation. And that is my end goal, my, my final aim, I guess, in photography. And that is when, for me, I'll know that I've made it. Oh, I'll know that I'm good enough for what I wanted to achieve from this. Um, for other people, that's not their goal. They want to create beautiful artwork and never show it to anybody. And that is fine as well. There is no right and wrong path in this. It's just whatever you want to do. But I know for some of you, knowing you feel good enough is a real important thing because you don't want to waste years of your life flogging a dead horse. And I get that because I've done... Before photography, I did sport, before that I did music, and I was always very anxious of this, especially coming from very humble beginnings. I didn't have a lot of money. I couldn't afford to mess it up. So I had to, I was always worried that if I was just wasting my time, I'd better move on to something else. Um, but anyway, I hope this helps. If you have any questions about this, let me know below, and I'll try and answer them. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.